Now we get into the the rest of the night slate, the big ones for the night slate, and we talk about someone who I want to know what you guys think in terms of could we see someone get fired. Houston lost to Rice tonight, and good for Rice. That is that is a huge win for that program. Houston has taken care of business for the most part in that game for a while now. And for them to win that game with JT Daniels, Luke McCaffrey had an insane catch, and that was really fun to watch. But if you're Houston, do you fire Dana Holgerson? Now, obviously money is probably the biggest concern there. The buyout will be the main thing that people want to know about. But if you're getting Big 12 money, do you not worry about that? You just use it? This is your five. Year five of Dan Holgerson. And yes, there have been some weird things. You had the COVID year. You had year one where you're quote unquote tanking and trying to figure that out. But you're now 28 and 20 in your fifth year at Houston. This isn't like Tulsa or Navy or someone else that's not in the area that you are. You're at Houston. Houston, one of the best areas for recruiting in terms of finding talent and getting players to commit to your school that can make a difference and help you compete against power five competition. There's a reason why Houston wanted to be at the power five is because they believed that they could get the talent in their area in on their home turf to come to their program so that they can compete with power five teams. And now you're losing to rice. In fact, Dana's last three losses are to Rice, Tulsa, and to SMU in embarrassing fashion. Now, yes, you are going to give up a lot of points when you play the style of offense that Dana wants to play. But that SMU game was awful. And not all of that is on Dana. I get that. But it's on Dana to stop that. And you just lost to Rice in year five. It's not like this is your first year and you're dealing with, like, these are all your guys now. There is nobody there from the previous regime that is making a big impact. These are your guys. So you haven't recruited well enough to beat Rice? I just, I I just, it blows my mind how if there's not a move made, how that's acceptable. And I'm sure they're going to say, no, it's not acceptable, regardless of what they decide. But in no way did Houston ever lose to Rice. Ever. Especially now that you're in the Big 12. You're going to the Big 12 because you believe you have the talent and the facilities and everything to compete with the best of the best. And now you're losing to a team that went 5-7 and in Conference USA last year. Conference USA, you can make an army, was the worst conference in college football last year. And you're losing to a team that has a losing record in 2022, in year five. I don't know. And and you look at even last year, two years ago, Houston goes to the AAC championship game, loses to Cincinnati. Now, you can make an argument that you should not have inferior talent to Cincinnati. But then at the same time, Dana's probably building his program. We go through that rebuild, the tanking season, and you're two years away from that. And sure, you know what? Maybe it was a surprise to get there. But you can make an argument that you should not be that much inferior to a Cincinnati team like that. But that's not the biggest problem. You go 12-2, and you make it to the AAC championship game. You then... The next year, with most or almost all of that same talent that brought you to the AAC championship game and helped you win 12 games, and you go eight and five. And then the worst part is after that season, you basically blame everybody else for saying that they should, your team should have made it to the AAC championship game. Why did you not expect to go to the AAC championship game? Why was that not the goal? Why is that not the expectation? It's not like you lost a lot of talent. It's not like you had a bunch of injuries. You had almost the exact same roster, the exact same two deep, and you went eight and five with losses, with a loss to Tulsa. 
the amount of talent that Tulsa gets compared to the amount of talent that Houston gets, period. Even with underachieving recruiting, if you ask a lot of people, that should be enough to win that game. Tulsa does not get the same athletes that Houston does. Tulsa does not have the same access to the athletes that Houston does. Houston is literally in a hotbed of recruiting. If the best recruits in Houston stayed at Houston, they would be one of the best programs in college football. Now, yes, they they're in the they were in the AAC, so got, some guys aren't going to come to Houston because they don't want to go to a Group of Five program, which is a whole nother debate. But you have this amount of talent, and you're losing to teams that either don't have the same access, or play in an inferior conference and have inferior talent. Now, yes, you can make an argument that there are some players on Rice right now that are better than what Houston has at their positions. But that's also a problem. Houston should never have that issue. Transfer portal obviously makes it different, but it just doesn't make any sense. You're in year five, and... You're, this is this is just if you're a Houston fan, I don't I don't know how any Houston fan isn't sick of this. And obviously the money part is probably the biggest thing there, but like the results just aren't doing it. And this is week two of year five, and you're losing to Rice. And I hate saying this about Rice because I don't want to take away from that win for them. But if you look at it objectively, in no universe should Houston lose to Rice ever. The fact that they were down 28 to 7 was embarrassing. That shouldn't happen. So I don't know what this this organization up, uh, above him is going to do, what this school is going to do, but you have to sit down and have a serious talk. And maybe Dana doesn't care cuz clearly you don't care if your team went to the AAC Championship and you didn't make it back there with the exact same team. So maybe Dana doesn't care. But at this point you have to look at should we move on? And obviously there's certain certain parts of this program that are good, but and there's other parts of this coaching staff that deserve blame. I mean, Doug Belk's probably up high on that list, but there's certain coaches that don't really have anything to do with the struggles. So I don't know. I'm curious to hear what everybody thinks. Should they move on from Dana? Is is it time? I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just don't have any good answers for why this is happening. I don't have any good answers for why Houston's underachieving because with Tom Herman, things were great. The hype was real. They were playing against really good teams. They were competing for conference championships. They were competing for New Year's Six Bowl bids. And now it feels like Houston's further from that than they've ever been. And that maybe even includes major Applewhite era. And that was horrible. So I don't know what, let me know what you guys think. Should Dana be gone? Is this, is it time to move on? What, what should we look at? If you're optimistic, what are you looking at for the future that you like? And if, for those who don't like it, let me know what you don't like. It's good win for rice. Good for them. Mike Bloomgren does a phenomenal job of building this program of helping them elevate their game and overachieve. And this was a huge win for that program. And maybe it elevates them in the AAC to compete and even make a bowl game. And I hope that that happens because I really like where he's going. I hope JT Daniels has a good season. I hope Luke McCaffrey has a good season. It was a good win for them. And maybe this is the game that sends Dana packing.